All right, today what I'm going to be doing is upon request, and I'm going to show how to go about making a comfrey salve. You might want to call it a healing salve. This is uh, in a reflection of a previous video that I did concerning a second degree burn that I had completely healed from without any doctors, without any scarring, and without any medical bills or emergency room, and no pain. So I was kind of surprised by the uh, responses that I got and people wanting me to show how I go about doing it because it's really not anything any more special than probably anybody else's. So as always, if you find anything or hear anything or see anything that might be beneficial or edifying to somebody else, all I ask you to do is just please share the information. I'll be right back with everything set up. Four ingredients that I utilize uh, in making this comfrey salve, and I think it's probably uh, pretty commonplace for a lot of people out there. The first thing is, uh, is gonna be some coconut oil. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna, I'm gonna use this scoop And I'm going to utilize three, I should have softened it up a little bit, but that's okay. I'm going to utilize three cups of organic, naturally refined coconut oil. I'm going to place it in this little crock that goes to a uh, miniature crock pot. All right, that's ingredient number one. The next ingredient is going to be comfrey for obvious reasons it's a comfrey salve i grow my own comfrey balking 14. so we've got three cups of organic uh, naturally refined coconut oil my choice uh, of oil and i'm going to take one full cup of this comfrey powder so that might give you an idea of the consistency of this this powder here i don't know if you can see it on camera here but the dust is coming up so it's very potent this is just what i do this is what you ask for now the next ingredient i do is lemon balm two tablespoons or one ounce and i'm going to put that in my pot here and i'm going to make it level i'm just using one ounce or two tablespoons of that lemon balm so what I need to do right now is, because my uh, coconut oil isn't uh, completely dissolved yet, I'm gonna put it into my pot. All right, now my little bitty crock pot, this is a miniature size one. Now, I wanna go over a couple things here. That's my style, that's the way I do it. I use coconut oil. You can use your extra virgin uh, olive oil. I choose coconut oil for a couple of reasons. I have more uses for the coconut oil around here than I do olive oil, although I really do like olive oil. The one thing about coconut oil is that I have never had coconut oil go rancid on me. That's one of the reasons. Not to say that it can't go rancid, but I've never had it go rancid. The other reason I like coconut oil is because it will solidify, like in this state right here, it becomes a, more of a solid and when it reaches temperatures of like 170, oh man, not 170, disregard that, 75, 76 degrees, somewhere in that ballpark, it will solidify. So I like that aspect of it um, and it's very healthy and I can eat it by the spoonful. You can do the same with olive oil. So I use coconut oil. You can do your choice of oil. Olive oil, extra virgin, or coconut oil. The comfrey. I grow my own comfrey. I harvest it several times a year. I dehydrate it myself. Uh, I use the leaf. I cut off uh, the part of the stalk of the leaf up to the leaf itself and I disregard or discard that and I go ahead and dehydrate the whole leaf and when that's done 
Then I will go ahead and uh, pull it off the dehydrator. I will crumble it up in a bowl with my hands. What remains that I can't crumble up most of the time is the remaining stalk of that leaf in the center of it. So you'll see that in a little tray here. That's what's left over and I'll just go put that in the compost or whatnot. So then I had those crumbled leaves. Then I take those crumbled leaves and I, um, I mill them in a grain mill. I got a very nice grain mill that I'm very happy with. It's not on a motor. I do it by hand so I'm not creating a lot of heat in grinding those leaves. So that's how I get the consistency that I got in this jar right here. When I say one cup of comfrey powder, it's the consistency of flour or talcum powder. That's important because you'll see in a lot of other recipes, people utilizing one cup of comfrey leaves that are uh, uh, crumbled up as fine as they can with their hands. Some of them might put them in uh, some sort of sack to... Um, put in, in, in the crock so it can steep through the sack or whatnot. I don't do that. So my one cup of comfrey powder is probably equivalent to somewhere in the ballpark of three or four cups of comfrey crushed crumbled leaves like you might see elsewhere. That's important. So be sure and take that into consideration. I do the same thing with my lemon balm. I grow it as just like the comfrey, organic. I don't put any um, synthetic herbicides or pesticides, no store-bought um, anything on my plants. They're purely natural and organic out here on the property. But I do the same thing with that lemon balm. I harvest it. I harvest it down a, a, a stem of it and I just leave it like that. I don't pick individual leaves. I dehydrate it and when I get it off the dehydrator, I just strip the leaves off the stem and I try to separate all those stems in my lemon balm. So I'm trying to get just the lemon balm leaf and flowering uh, if it's going on on the lemon balm. And I do the same thing with it. I grind it to a very, very fine powder like talcum powder. Now, what I did do today is I took the lemon balm, it would be the same with the comfrey. I took the lemon balm and I ground it with a coffee mill or coffee grinder, electric one, like some of you might have, but not too many people out there are probably going to have a high dollar hand grain mill like I do. So I utilized this to grind up the lemon balm today. And one little tip I want to give you, because you can get a good, nice, fine grind on your plant material. It's small and it seems a little bit more tedious, but you can do it. Uh, crumble it up with your hands as much as you can. And then I scoop it up here and I, and I start grinding. One thing I want to let you know is on these coffee grinders, just in case you haven't used one before, because they're fairly economical or cheap, is as you're grinding it, you'll see in the video here, shake it a little bit. What that does, it kind of helps anything underneath the blade to get worked around so that uh, force of that blade can work it up in the chamber here and, and, and grind it up. But even then, this does not grind as well as my uh, uh, grain mill. So when I take it out of there, I'll take it and I'll put it in a very fine um, sieve. You got different courses, obviously, people know this, but I don't know if you can tell on this, this is a lot more coarse um, kitchen strainer or sieve right here than this one is. And I'll run it through here, and you'll see at the end here, as I'm tapping on my hand, I got a lot of residual bigger stuff. So you can discard that, or you can put it back in the, uh, uh, the coffee mill and, and try to grind it up some more but run it through a sieve and then you'll get a fine uh, consistent grinding on your plant material. So we have three cups of coconut oil. I have one cup of very finely ground comfrey 
That's, that, that's, that, that's huge to understand. It's not leaves and just pressed down to a cup. And then I have one ounce or two tablespoons of very finely ground lemon balm. I use the lemon balm for its antiviral and antiseptic uh, properties that it's known to have. That's why I chose to use it and incorporate it into this. So all that is cooking now into my little bitty crock pot. In my little bit of crock pot here, I have two settings. I have low and high. When you see other people go about making it, you'll typically hear them put it on warm. If I had a warm setting on it, I would do so, but I don't. I'm not too concerned about being on low setting. I don't think it's, it's working too high. Evidently, it's been working for me because it heals a second degree burn just fine. I took my candy thermometer to it on a few occasions. After it's been going or cooking uh, for two or three hours or whatever, I take the candy thermometer to it. Um, as a matter of fact, I got it right here. Um, one of these things, and I get the temperature reading on that low setting in that oil. And the temperature reading, I don't know if it's designed in the crock pot or it's just a coincidence, but it's usually at 212 degrees, the boiling point of water. I will come by and I will stir it up every hour, every two hours, every half hour, whenever I walk by and I just think of it. Now, given the fact that it's, uh, we're going into the evening, it's nighttime now, and I started this late, I'll turn it off uh, before I go to bed because I don't want it going all night long, and uh, I'll give it a stir before I do. And then when I get up in the morning, I'll just turn it on when I go to make my coffee or something. That's what I plan on doing. So I'll be back then. So. This has been going. I got up this morning, drinking my coffee, turned it on for a few hours. Uh, we're probably uh, from last night and today I'm looking at about coming right on six hours, about five and a half hours. So the next thing that we have to do is we have to get our comfrey out. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to strain it through this very fine mesh of a, of a sieve kitchen strainer and so forth. The intent here is, uh, if you hadn't figured it out already, is most of that plant material in a very fine uh, particle size is going to be in this sap. That's probably why it's so strong and why the color is so much darker than the typical salves that you might see out there. But I still go ahead and I strain it through and what that's going to do is to make sure that I don't have any larger particles because as I go to use my salve, I don't want this chalky or a grainy feel on, on my salve. But still because the plant material is in there, some of you may still want to call this uh, somewhere in between a poultice and a salve. It just is what it is. The other thing is by doing this, uh, what you should see, if everything goes as normal, uh, you should see some of them uh, small particles actually build up and clog up in here and I'll let it uh, drain through um, that as much as possible. So I'm actually removing some of those fine particles if I use this fine of a, a strainer. So we're gonna do that. I have uh, eight four ounce jars in the oven I, it's just something i like to do i like to kind of sterilize with a little heat so i got them in a pan uh they're warming up in the oven just as a make me feel good kind of thing i have some water boiling or getting ready to boil here on the stove and what that's for is that's going to be for our last ingredient obviously it's going to be beeswax so i have some beeswax here uh, i buy these packets here they come in five ounce uh, packages all individual one ounce bars and now we're putting in three ounce uh, three ounces of organic beeswax so what I'm going to do is uh, turn this thing up a little bit and we're going to get this beeswax melting I'm just going to put this stainless bowl on top of the stainless pot with water it'll be here on the stove and starting to melt so there we go organic Coconut oil, organic comfrey powder, organic lemon balm powder, organic beeswax. Those are the four ingredients that I put in mine. If you do some research on it, you can determine if you want to put some vitamin E in it or not. I've never had anything uh, go past 
shelf life. I don't even know what the shelf life of this stuff is. All I know is so far, I've never had anything smell bad, go bad, create any mold or anything like that using the coconut organic naturally refined oil and, and these other ingredients. So far, so good. My little stove here, so you see the beeswax is already starting to melt. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off here. This is our comfrey salve. I'm gonna show you and stir it up here since we got a little bit more daylight coming through the skylight above me. Uh, you'll see this stuff kind of settle down here at the bottom. So I'm gonna just give it another good little stir like so. And then I'm gonna set this camera back down and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna sift it or pour it in through the sieve. Actually, I need to, I'm gonna put this little thermometer here in that little hole. What that does is that just keeps that from slipping out on me as I'm pouring, because this uh, crock pot is a little warm when I pick it up. Okay, here I go again. What do I mean by that? Well, I've already completed everything and I was filming, but the knucklehead that I can be sometimes, I forgot to turn the microphone on, so there was no audio. So here's what happened. Now while that's going on and my jars are heating up, I'm gonna go ahead and give my comfrey mixture here a good stirring. And then what I like to do is I like to run it through a sieve. It's just a little tedious precaution that I like to do. I, I feel like I get a better mix and I give myself some assurance that I don't have any clumps or anything like that. And when I do so, what you'll see is that um, I end up actually pulling back some of that powder in, in the uh, uh, solution. That's okay, I don't worry about putting it back in. If you hadn't figured out now why I do this so finely ground is because my plant material is going to stay in the sap. You won't even be able to tell the plant material is in there. But it is a lot stronger and I just feel I get the full benefits of the plant by having it in there. And it's an easy process. So once I do that, I put it back into the crock pot. By that time, my wax is already uh, melted and I put that wax, three ounces, into the crock pot and I blend it or mix it up real good. I keep stirring and keep stirring because I have that powder. So I'm always constantly stirring, you'll see that. Once I do that, I go ahead and I take it out of that crock and I pour it into a big Pyrex uh, mix, uh, measuring cup because it has a nice little pour spout on it so it's, it makes it nice and easy and efficient when I'm going to fill up my jars. What I used to do is out straight out of the crock, I used to take a ladle and I'd mix it up all the time and I'd take a ladle and fill my jars like that. Mix and then fill, mix and fill. Always keeping that powder suspended. But I just like keeping a good constant consistency to the batch. So now that I got it in the Pyrex jar, which is a lot cleaner and, and faster for me doing so, I get my jars out of the oven, I take them, I set them on the counter, I let them cool a little bit, spread them out so they'll cool, cool a little bit quicker um, so I can touch them and handle them uh, just a little bit. I just take a spoon in that uh, measuring cup and I am mixing and then I'm gonna fill a jar or two and then I'm gonna mix some more, fill the next jar or two and I do that until they're all filled, all the way to the end. And I got my lids going on at, right after I fill them. Almost like canning. That's just how I do it. I put the rings on, and then the next thing I wanna do is because I have the plant material, 80, 90%, well, 70 to 90% of all that plant material is still in there. Instead of letting mine cool on the counter, coming to ambient temperature, I stick mine in the refrigerator. So I get a lot quicker cooling. I want things to set up before I have very much of my plant material, that um, powder, settling down toward the bottom of the jar. And what that allows is for more consistency in, in potency and, and uh, texture and everything from the top of the jar to the bottom. Now this is a jar. The, the other ones are, are still in the fridge. This is a jar that I keep in my bathroom. And I will tell you, I grind it up so fine, you won't even be able to tell that it's in there. 
and because of the color, if you can look right here, most people's are kind of a light green. But this is what I do, and this is how I go about doing it. So that's why I still call it a salve. Folks, it works for me. Uh, everything I do through this whole process, uh, probably the only thing that uh, mine might be a little bit different is me keeping the plant material in the salve that you can't even tell. And as a matter of fact, during the course of this video, if you're still with me, and you've watched this up in this up to this point, you would have seen me hold up a whiteboard with a three digit number on two different occasions during the course of this video. If you saw that and you would like to have one of these eight jars that we made here today in this video, here's what I'm gonna ask you to do if you're interested in having one of these jars, cause I'm gonna give them away. They're not for sale. I'm giving them away as a three basket novelty. But this is the same recipe, same procedure of making this comfrey with lemon balm salve that healed my second degree burn. No doctors, no scarring, no pain, no medical bills. Same stuff on sunburns, bug bites, um, sore muscles, my elbows or knees, same exact stuff. And if you're interested in having that, here's what you got to do to get that. You got to send me an email. Here's what you got to put in the subject matter of the email. Comfrey Sab. Put the first three digit number in that subject matter, leave a space, and put the second three digit number that you would have seen on this video. In the uh, message body, just send me a little message, let me know you would like to have a jar of this novelty three basket living comfrey salve that we made here in this video, and I will send it to you as a novelty uh, item. Give me your name or initials, and a valid uh, mailing address here in the continental United States. It must be CONUS. I wanna to apologize to you folks abroad, but I just can't do that. So the first eight individual emails um, with individual email addresses and individual mailing addresses, because I'd like to get one per household or per person if, if I can. Just as a thank you, for uh, stopping by, um, saying hello, being supportive of me uh, trying to make these videos and, and getting them out to people. You do not have to be a subscriber to this channel. You can be a subscriber. If you want to subscribe, you know how to do that below. So that's what we're going to do. And I'll get them out uh, free of charge to you, and I will pay for shipping in the continu continental United States. So long as you got in the subject line, Comfrey Sab and those two different three-digit numbers. Now, that is how I go about doing it. Nothing real great, nothing real special, but that's just my way of doing it. Um, I hope you liked it. If you did, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give me a thumbs down. Just be honest with your opinions. Meanwhile, if you found it to be beneficial or edifying, maybe somebody else would too. So what I'd like you to do is just pass it along, share it with other folks. And then have a nice day. May all your branches become full of fruit and I will catch you next time. Hurrah!